Hi, I haven't read a book to you all for a while, and this is a book that Silas and I read together. Let me try to fix this a little bit better. Uh, this weekend, and I thought it was a very nice book. It's called The Legend of the Christmas Tree, and it's by Rick Osborne. And uh, I might not need my glasses to read it, so. Here's the family in the living room. Tonight, tonight, we get our Christmas tree, sang Amanda and Beth. Presents, 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 uh, chanted Buddy. Come and eat first, Mom called. At the dinner table, Dad prayed. Lord, thank you for the food and fun. Help us keep Jesus in our hearts and mind more than ever this Christmas. After dinner, Mom said, okay, time to get our tree. They're going to go get their Christmas tree. And look here, it's Quentin. He's coming to join me. I think he's probably lonely. They snuggled up in the car together. Dad drove out into the snowy night. Why don't we go to a tree farm and cut our tree, Mom suggested. That's a great idea, said Dad. Well, you can't do that in Arizona. The snowstorm turned into a thick fall. Are we lost? Suddenly, Buddy called out, there it is, he sees it. He pointed to a small sign. They drove down the bumpy dirt road. An old man in a red flannel shirt stood, in the <clears throat> stood by three beautiful Christmas trees. My goodness, sorry about Quentin. Under, under one tree, they saw a box wrapped in shiny silver paper. See that box? Right there. What's in that box, Amanda asked the man. The tree and the secret in the box tell the legend of the Christmas tree. The man said, what is the legend? Please tell us, please, buddy. The farmer told his story. Many years ago, so he was a farmer telling the story. Many years ago, a monk named Boniface taught people about God. He told them that the evergreen is a triangle with three corners. You know, most pine trees are three corners. But it is still just one tree. And he said that God is like that too. God is three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but he is still one God. People began using the evergreen trees in churches to teach others about God. Not a good idea. The old storyteller pointed to the first tree. During the time of the knights and castles, people had a holiday on December 24th. They called it the Feast of Adam and Eve. So here's, I think this is what it's supposed to be. There's the castle in the background. They decorated the evergreen trees with apples and twists of bread, and they used to tell the story of the tree of life in the Garden of Eden. But there was no Christmas tree yet. This was the feast of Adam and Eve. The father took two giant I mean the farmer, not the father. The farmer took two giant steps to the second tree. Here's a picture of somebody writing. A long time ago, a teacher named Martin Luther, that must be who that is, Martin Luther. He saw a beautiful evergreen tree with starlights sparkling off its icicles. He cut the tree down and took it home, and he put little candles on it and lit the candles. Then he told his children the story of Jesus, who is the light of the world. So that's how Martin Luther used it. The storyteller, the farmer, moved to the third tree. Oh, that tree's my favorite, Beth said. The big man smiled. Soon, people in Europe begin decorating trees with pretty glass ornaments and treats. And that is the, how the legend of the Christmas tree is. That is how we got the legend of the Christmas tree. Can we get our tree now? Buddy asked. I have just this one. I have just the one, said the farmer. He lifted a large tree that was leaning against the snack shack. Just for you, he said, with a wink. See, you can even tell there it's a triangle. What? Why is it a triangle? There's three corners. Remind us of God, who's three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Dad, Dad tied the tree on the top of their car. Then the jolly tree farmer handed Dad the box wrapped in silver paper. 
Don't open this until you finish decorating your tree. Everyone called, thank you, thank you. They waved and went on their way. The next morning, Amanda helped Dad put the tree into its stand. Beth and Buddy helped Mama in the kitchen. Dad sang and whistled Christmas, whistled Christmas carols, and then he put the silvery box under the tree. And what's the mother bringing out? <gasps> Who remembers what Boniface told the people? Asked Dad. One tree has three corners. One God has three persons, said Amanda. Mom brought gingerbread cookies shaped like bread twists and apples from the kitchen. They look like the ones on the, at, um, for the feast of Adam and Eve and on the Adam and Eve tree, the tree of life. As the kids helped Mom string lights on the tree, Dad read the story of Jesus' birth. As soon as all their favorite ornaments were on the tree, Bet said, can we open the silver box now? Inside, they found a beautiful glass star with a note tied on it. Dad read the note. The wise men found Jesus under the star of Bethlehem. May all who see the tree under this star know the true meaning of Christmas. The end. Isn't that a nice story? I hope we all know and remember the true meaning of Christmas and that every year it becomes more important to us because Jesus came as a baby so that he could die as a man for our sins. I'm so thankful for that, and I'm thankful for all my healthy grandchildren and for my healthy uh, daughters and sons and son-in-laws. Love you. Grandma loves you. Bye-bye.